Now we are moving with the arcade physics system. So there it is. That was how relatively simple it was to convert our non-physics version of our uh, of our ECS demo with these tanks to an arcade an arcade physics version using ECS here. Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and in this video, we're going to look at using ECS with Phaser's Arcade Physics. Now, we've done a four part ECS video using Phaser 3, so do go check that out if you haven't seen that series yet. If you're not familiar with ECS, ECS that's Entity Component System, it's a way for you to organize your code and um, write code for your game. So, go through our ECS uh, part four four part series, it's at our arcade YouTube channel. So you just go to youtube.com slash arcade and you'll see in our video section uh, these four ECS videos, part one, part two, part three, and part four. So if you do enjoy our game development videos, including our ECS videos, be sure to hit like on this video and more importantly, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this talking about game development uh, on the web. So now for this video, we're going to go through, we're going to start from where we left off in part four of our Entity Component System uh, beginner series, and we're going to change it to use Phaser's Arcade Physics System. So I'm going to make myself smaller here. Let's go over here. Okay, so this is the game scene that we had last created. Now one thing that's different here that we've already done is we've moved the um, array of uh, array of texture uh, keys, or that's, that's what I called it there, uh, texture keys into this const at the top of our game scene. And then we're just basically passing that through here, where previously we had it as an array right there. Now we're gonna do that because we're gonna need to use this again um, for our uh, arcade sprite physics, arcade physics sprite system. So that's how we're gonna basically do this. We're gonna create a arcade physics, uh, arcade physics component, and then an arcade physics system to handle that. So to start, let's make a new component. Go to our components folder here, and let's make a new file. We're gonna call it um, arcade sprite. Now this is gonna be very similar to our normal sprite, right? So let's just copy this to start. Arcade sprite. We're gonna to wanna to know what texture it is. So let's go arcade sprite. And it's gonna be the same setup. We need to know what texture it's going to be. And then other than that, it's basically the same. So now let's go make a system. Go to our systems here. So we have our sprite system. I just put it in our sprite system file because um, we're going to share a lot of code here. And let me just go to the running demo here. So this is just what we had last. Let's go at the top here. We're just going to create a new function that will uh, create a new system. So let's call it create arcade sprite sprite system and Let's just say it takes a scene for now. We are gonna change that, but just to get this going. Uh, textures, string array. Okay, cool. So actually we're gonna copy this whole thing and just edit it instead of typing it all out because it's mostly the same. All right, so let's just, um, let's call textures. Let's just walk this through one line at a time. So we're gonna still have a sprites by ID map. We still want a sprites query to get all the sprites that we can um, operate on, all the ones that meet this criteria of having a sprite or well, having a set of components. Now we're gonna change this. So now instead of having a sprite position and rotation component, we're gonna have, we still on position, we still on rotation. What we're going to add is velocity, since our arcade sprite is gonna handle velocity for us and the arcade sprite component that we just made. So let's come here, we want velocity, and then we're gonna want, so we want two more, of the arcade sprite components. So let's do that. So from components, first is velocity. Since the arcade sprite handles velocity, we're gonna wanna put that in here, velocity. 
velocity. And then we're going to want the new um, arcade sprite component that we just made. Arcade sprite. And let's come here and it's going to be velocity and arcade sprite. Cool. Now our entry query is going to be the same. This is just the newly added entities with these this set of components, these four components will we'll end, we'll end up in this query. And when we remove components uh, or remove entities, um, they no longer match this criteria. We have our exit uh, query here. So that's all the same as the original sprite system that we had. Let's go in our define system here. So what we're gonna do, wanna do is create a arcade sprite instead of a sprite here, right? So we're doing scene.add.sprite. Let's just break this out so we can see it um, better. So let's call this const sprite, and we're putting the sprite into our map. Okay, so we actually want it to be an arcade uh, sprite. So one thing, one thing we can do is do scene.physics.add.sprite, uh, sprite, and that would sprite, and that would give us an arcade sprite. But um, Given that we are in phaser, uh, we it's easier to handle collisions if we make our sprites from a group. And then in our scene, we can define how our sprites collide based on the group that they're in. So instead of using the scene, we're gonna actually pass in a group. And that's why I was semi-hesitant to write scene here, but we're gonna ch change this to a group. And it's gonna be an arcade physics uh, group. group. And now instead of um, scene.add, delete that, group.add, group.create, um, a group.get is actually what we want, group.get. And what we want, what we need, let's get some code complete. We need x, y, key, which is the texture key, uh, frame, all that stuff we don't need. So we want to put it in a position already. So that's the position component. Uh, dot x index into the ID, right? So this is the ID of our entity. Then we want position dot y index into the ID or um, index in into the actual ID, the index of the entity that we're using. Um, and then the same texture that we were using before. So this is gonna give us an, an arcade sprite from this uh, arcade sprite group or this arcade group this arcade physics group that by default is gonna be arcade sprites. Create that sprite, set that into here, and let's just change this so that we have the right typing. This is gonna be a map of physics.arcade.sprite. So that's good. Let's come down to our entities that we're gonna loop over, get the ID, get that sprite. It's still sprite, don't do anything. We set the position, we set the Angle. Well, we actually don't need to set position. We're gonna set velocity, so we don't do this. Sprite dot set velocity. We're gonna do velocity dot x id and velocity dot y id. Great. And in exit, we're just gonna do the same thing. We destroy that sprite, or actually, we're gonna do is send it back to its group. What we want here is actually use the group. Um, instead of destroying our sprite, we're gonna do group.kill and hide. That'll just uh, send it back to the group. So it's called sprite. And great, so now we have our arcade sprite system. Let's export it. Let's go back to our game scene here. And we're gonna wanna use both of these things. Um, so for clarity, let's just get rid of our CPUs for a second. And we don't need these. We can get rid of too much excess stuff in our scene here. I'm just gonna comment these. We'll bring them back later. All right, let's do that. It should just be our player. Oh no, we're still creating them. Let's not create them at all. We want to comment out this. Okay, so our player should still move. Yep. Okay, so what we want to do, um, we're going to replace our sprite and our um, our sprite component here with the arcade sprite component that we created. So let's come up here, import from components arcade sprite. 
arcade sprite. Now we want our um, arcade sprite system. So let's go here, create arcade sprite system. And let's come here. So here, um, here. instead of adding a sprite to our uh, player tank, this blue tank, we're gonna instead do add component this.world arcade sprite for our tank. Uh, the same texture, it's gonna be um, zero, so we could still convert to an enum, but we're not gonna do that here. Uh, we have all that, so rotation, velocity, um, input, arcade sprite, player. So what we, so position, rotation, velocity, arcade sprite. Those are the four, the four components that we need in our arcade sprite system right here. Position, rotation, velocity, arcade sprite. So our player has all those things, beautiful. Now in our sprite system, we don't actually want this vanilla arcade, sp uh, vanilla sprite system. We're gonna do this dot sprite system, create arcade sprite system. Now it takes in the group, which we don't have, but we do have those texture keys, texture keys. So let's up here make a, um, let's just call it a sprite group. So it's this dot physics dot add dot group. We don't really need to put anything specific in here. Let's pass that in sprite group. And good. All right. So we have a uh, sprite here. Now I, this is not going to do much because we need to update our, our player system for this. Before we do that, let's go to our main dot ts. Two. Let's go here. Let's go to our main.ts and turn on debug so that we can actually see that what we're working with is a uh, arcade sprite. And there, there's our little bounding box. And let's just do no gravity. Okay, so it doesn't get confused. Let's close that. And okay, so we want to update our player system or our input system, which one? Input dot direction, good. Movement system, that's good. Let's see. Oh, we need to update our speed. Where is our speed? Speed is one, which is of course super slow. Um, instead, what we wanna do, let's just say 200. Now we are moving with the arcade physics system. So there it is. That was how relatively simple it was to convert our non-physics version of our uh, of our ECS demo with these tanks to an arcade an arcade physics version using ECS here. So let's just go over what we did. The key parts here in our in our game scene. We added a arcade sprite, right? That's this. We added a uh, arcade sprite system. We then put the arcade sprite component onto our blue tank, this is our player, because we're gonna make our player movable via arcade physics. We, in our arcade sprite system, we changed our query to take in four components, and that is position, rotation, velocity, and the arcade sprite component, so that we know that uh, we are making an arcade sprite for, for that particular entity. And then in our entity enter, enter entities query, our sprite query enter, for any newly added entities that match these, these four components, we create one out of the group. So we give it a arcade physics group. We create a sprite from that group. And then for each sprite, we look through them all like we've, doing, like we've been doing in ECS. And then we set their velocity and set their angle. Um, and then, you know, when they get destroyed, we can just do group hide, kill, and hide. And then to make our arcade physics group in our scene, we just do physics that add that group, like you've probably done before in phaser three. We pass that group into our arcade sprite system here, so that our our sprite our sprite our arcade sprite system can do what we just talked about. And for the last thing is we just updated our movement system to make it move faster uh, to better match what arcade physics would like. And there we go. That is our moving the uh, our player. 
And you can see one of the great things about ECS is how loosely coupled a lot of the code really is. Um, we could have actually passed in speed into movement system here instead of setting it like this, for example, so that we don't have to touch movement system at all. Um, so let's just say, you know, let's say the fall was one for some reason. Uh, great. And we would come here into our scene, create our movement system and just say the speed is 200. And then all we would have had to change was just create our component, create our system, and then modify the scene and everything still works. All right, awesome. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like and hit subscribe for more videos on using ECS with Phasers 3's with Phasers Arcade Physics System.